Hello everyone, I am Manali Reshamwala, Assistant Professor from LJ Institute of Physiotherapy. Today I am going to talk about chronic bronchitis, a physiotherapy management. It is a part of syllabus for final year physiotherapy students of Gujarat University and the subject is physiotherapy in cardiopulmonary conditions. In previous video tutorial, we discussed about chronic bronchitis in which definition, signs and symptoms, pathology and physiotherapy assessment in detail. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss the principles of treatment, prophylaxis or control of the chronic bronchitis, aims of physiotherapy management and physiotherapy management for patient with chronic bronchitis. So the principle of treatment will include first of all is decrease the bronchial irritation so that we can reverse the pathological effect which is occurring in the disease to make it chronic. First and foremost advice is to stop smoking so that we can prevent a patient from getting into chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. We need to ask him to avoid dust, smoky, damp or foggy atmosphere. Occupation or house condition should also be changed if required. Next is control of infection can be done with the help of antibiotics or flu injections each year can also be given. Further is control bronchospasm with medicine example like salbutamol and other bronchodilators. Control and decrease in amount of sputum can be done with the help of physiotherapy with inhalation and humidification. Oxygen therapy is given to reduce the hypoxic drive and thus the respiratory failure. Prescribe with 20 masks with careful monitoring of ABG, whatever the oxygen therapy we are giving. Next is prophylaxis or control. Control of atmospheric pollution. Stopping of smoking right now is very important to control the disease. Treat all the acute infections promptly. Maintain good general health should be advised. Next is physiotherapy treatment which will start with the aims to be considered. First is to facilitate the removal of secretion and relieve any bronchospasm. Second is to improve pattern of breathing and breathing control. Third is to teach the local relaxation and improve posture. Fourth is to mobilize the thorax and shoulder girdle. Fifth is to improve exercise tolerance. And last is to give some of the advice to the patient. So let's start with each one of in detail with the physiotherapy management. How we can manage removal of secretion? We can use or give a postural drainage in modified position to the patient. Patient may lie with the thorax over the edge of the bed or pile of the newspaper or with the help of pillows we can make the patient to lie down in a modified postural drainage position. We need to ask him to take breathing exercises 20 minutes twice a daily. We can also give clapping and shaking over the affected leg lung, uh, segments of, followed by coughing or huffing. If secretions are very thick and tenacious, patient may be given inhalation with pinol or tincture of benzene added to boiling water prior to postural drainage that we can give a steam inhalation. Bronchial hygiene technique in later stages can also be included which may include humidification, nebulizer, suction and etc. to be used. Improve breathing pattern. Teach diaphragmatic breathing exercise with a relaxed shoulder girdle in crook lying position. After removal of secretion, breathing control technique is also be taught. Lateral coastal expansion breathing exercises helps to improve breathing in all over the segments of the lung. Breathing control can be done with this way. We have to ask the patient to inhale through nose and exhale through mouth. During in inspiration, the patient's abdomen should get expanded and during expiration, it should go in so that we can get to know the movement of the diaphragm is occurring in correct pattern or not. These things initially can be taught along with the breathing exercise in semi crookline position. After that, we can make the patient to do the same breathing control pattern during sitting, then in sending and we can also incorporate this breathing control during walking and stair climbing so that we can reduce the breathlessness of the patient. Next is relaxation. It should be incorporated into patient's lifestyle by making him to follow pace activities throughout the day. 
he has to uh, write down like which all the activities are very difficult for him and which all are the activities are very easier for him by the help of bog scale we can get to know the level of activity of a level of exertion of the patient we have to give him advice according to it maintain a positive attitude here's a patient to recover very easily we have to make him understand he need to seek support so that in whenever he requires he need to take support from any person or equipment it will be easier for him to avoid any kind of exertion he has to take time for relaxation and breathing control as well next is thoracic mobility exercise and exercise tolerance we need to ask the patient to do trunk bending rotation side bending forward and backward bending movements gradually exercises with breathing control can be also added like walking during walking during stair climbing he has to do breathing control then regular walking exercises like short duration walk is always uh, encouraged to the patient and shoulder girdle exercises to maintain shoulder range of motion advice to the patient will be maintain personal hygiene and hydration make uh, take medicines and exercises regularly stop smoking avoid dusty smoky foggy atmosphere whenever possible change occupation and house place if needed in later or terminal stages most of the patient we find in icu or in a hospital because they may require further equipments like oxygen and ventilator so in case of that patient we have to try to make patient as comfortable and independent possible we can give him postural drainage breathing control and relaxation suction ipbb humidifiers nebulizers which may also help the patient to recover and oxygen therapy is usually given to the patient to maintain pao2 level during if patient is having an acute exacerbation at the time the aims and treatment varies with the other thing so for that the aims will be to clear lung secretion to loosen secretions to help and encourage production of cough that is a uh, productive cough is very important in this kind of patient to remove of secretion and to improve gaseous interchanges in the lung treatment can be ipbb that is intermittent positive pressure breathing postural drainage with percussion suction with coughing and huffing nebulization humidified oxygen therapy and hydration here are the references thank you